So I'm going to go ahead and, and click on Interactive Report. And I want you to, to notice, here I have an interactive report uh, on some employees, and I have an interactive report, just a very long report of IDs. So this is an interactive report, and this is an interactive report. So yes, you can have many interactive reports on the same page. Um, there's one really cool feature that just works out of the box. I want you to pay close attention to uh, the headings here. As I scroll down, notice that the headings scroll down with me. Now watch as I encounter the second interactive report. It now shifts, and now the second interactive report heading uh, scroll are, are locked. And as I scroll back up, it switches. Um, one thing to just take note of is that uh, interactive reports now have the capabilities of pivoting on data. So I'm going to click this little pivot button, and I've predefined a pivot which is basically looking at um, jobs uh, and their salaries across different departments. So you can see how much clerks are getting paid in accounting versus research and sales. Uh, if you want to configure this, I'm going to click Edit Pivot. This is what the menu looks like. Notice it's a little modal pop-up, um, which is much nicer uh, than before. So you can actually move this down and look at your report while you edit your, your pivot. But you can see here, I'm pivoting on job, so you can see here are the jobs listed across the top, and for the different rows, I want to look at department name, so you can see the department names being listed here, and then I'm saying I want to sum the salary. Right? So um, this is just how much we're spending on uh, different job types in the different departments. You could you could do something like average. Right, so you can see the average salary for, uh, and, and this is really nice because uh, this is kind of getting into business intelligence analytics. I mean, it, interactive reports are never going to be a substitute for business intelligence, um, but this is a really cool feature. But one thing that I do want to point out is notice that the pivot table does not have the heading scrolling. Right, so. Um, maybe that's something that's going to come later. I'm not sure, uh, but the but remember the difference here is that the ID column will kind of stay on this long report. Um, one last one one other thing is that because we have interactive reports, multiple interactive reports on the same page. Uh, if I was to do something like filter, uh, we're going to do on employee name equals Adams. So we're going to filter this report, so we're looking at Adams, and we're going to filter this report so that we're just looking at ID5, apply. If I was to leverage the clear cache or, or um, reset or clear interactive report uh, option here, so I'm going to say uh, RIR for reset interactive report, notice that it's going to reset everything on the page. Um, now, some of you might be wondering, how do I link to a given interactive report? So uh, you may remember this, uh, this functionality here. Let me copy this. You may have, be used to this syntax here where you say interactive report equals, then you provide a column alias and a name. So let's see what happens when I try to use this. So it tells me that report does not exist. So now you need to make sure that you specify a name of the interactive report that you would like to target. And so what that means is that these different interactive reports need to have an ID. So how we would change that is it would be this plus static ID. Oops. And uh, I currently I'm having an issue uh, with this particular part working, um, but uh, I just want to I just want to add that now we need to add the static ID here. 
Um, so, and if you want to know what the static ID is from your interactive report, if I navigate to my EMP report, and go down and we can find static ID. So I should be able to use EMP. The idea here is that I can use EMP underscore report like this, and it should work. Now, the only issue here is that, oops. Uh, we don't see, but nothing happened. So again, this is an early adopter. Um, and actually, let me put the percent sign here to see. Yeah, no, that totally broke it. Before we go, is that interactive reports have been overhauled from the ground up. So uh, if you have any custom styling at all of your interactive reports that's using you know, the old interactive report classes and IDs, that's all been changed, so that's no longer going to work. Um, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to kind of inspect elements here and kind of and look at the new classes and the new IDs. Um, and for the most part, it's been pretty good one-to-one -one mapping as far as what the new um, classes and IDs are, and it's pretty easy to to make those changes. Um, but uh, it's all been changed. So any custom interactive report styling is no longer is going to work in Apex 5. Okay. Um, bro, I got I to gotta give you one more, one more question. Uh, can I download an interactive report to, to a different type, such as XLS, RTF, PDF, doc, etc.? Yeah, so if I go to Actions and Download, here, the, here are the, you can get PDF, and uh, PDF basically uh, that rec that's going to be produced however you have your Apex instance configured uh, to get that PDF. Could be the Apex listener. I'm sorry, uh, ORDS um, version 2.0, uh, Oracle RESTful Data Services. It could be BI Publisher. It could be Jasper Reports. It all just depends how you have that configured. Um, as far as XLS, I believe there's a plugin out there that tries that does that for you. Um, but uh, there's no XLS out of the box. It's just it's kind of been problematic. Okay, great, Tyson. Uh, a fantastic presentation. Uh, cred credible amount of knowledge that you have and you've shared with the group. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you everyone for attending.